Welcome guys, this is our first character breakdown on the channel, and I wanted to show off one of my favorite pieces, Exodus. This is one of the pieces I've been using on my Out the Pack series for my X-Men team, and he has definitely been pulling his weight. There's a lot going on in this guy, so I just wanted to do an in-depth explanation as well as some extra tech you can run with him, or some things you need to be aware of while running the figure that can help anybody who wants to use this kind of Krakoan Revival or style of X-Men gameplay. So first, looking at this card, we've got the Krakoan Revival trait. That is all explained in this big old booklet. We'll get into this in a minute, but I wanna run through the rest of his character first before we get into this. It's a lot there. Next, we've got Overwhelming Psionic Mind. So he has Traded Mind Control, which is already annoying on its own. And then when Exodus uses it after resolutions, deal a hit character damage equal to Exodus's damage value. And if we take a look at the back of his card, we can see that on the top of his dial, he has four damage, then threes and twos, and then a four at the very end as well. So this is traded across his entire dial. Doesn't matter what click he's on. He can always do this mind control with the damage afterwards. And this wording on this is very interesting because mind control will hit. And then after resolutions, he will just deal the damage. This is still reduced by reducers, but it is not considered an attack. So you do not take mystics damage. Um, you cannot super senses out of it because it is not an attack, it is just damage. It bypasses stop clicks, which is very useful for dealing with annoying figures such as Blackheart or the vampire Wonder Woman because it just hits past their stop clicks. This is a very important distinction and can come up in a lot of unique scenarios to know that this is not damage from an attack, it is just damage. Next up, we've got his defensive ability, energy shield deflections, and once per turn, when a friendly character is healed or turned to its starting click, heal Exodus one click. He has this defensive ability on every click except for his top two, which means he's got some healing that you can do. This healing shows up in two primary ways. One, when he uses the X-Men team ability on an adjacent character, he will always heal them, and then he might take some feedback damage, but he will then heal, and you can stack the triggers so that you take the X-Men damage, then heal one, so you're always just healing an ally, or sometimes you'll heal yourself in the process. Or when another ally uses their X-Men team ability to heal their friend, Exodus will also just get the heal. He doesn't have to be anywhere near them. Also, when you revive with Krakoan Revival, they are placed on their starting click, which is why that mentions this in this ability. So when you Krakoan Revive somebody next to him, he heals. Then for his normal powers, we've got Running Shot, Phasing Teleport, Telekinesis, Penetrating Psychic Blast, Invulnerable, and Leadership. The Leadership is very nice as it adds to your action total and he takes up a lot of points by himself at 95 points. And then he's got the X-Men team ability. Looking at his dial again, once we get to those healing clicks, he starts actually being able to do damage more reliably with the Penetrating Psychic Blast. We just kind of pray that we don't go to that two damage click. Everything else has really good damage. As well as the phasing teleport. And since he can fly, you can carry allies out with that phasing to get out of dodge if you really need to. If you're in a tough situation, you don't have to make breakaway rolls, you can just run away. All right, now we will get into the Cocoon Revival Bystanders card. So the Cocoon Revival is quite a paragraph. I'll read it out and then I'll summarize it. So, Krakoan Revival says, For all characters with this trait, when a friendly standard character with the X-Men keyword and a lower point value would be KO'd by an opposing effect, you may instead choose to turn that character to its starting click, this game, and place them adjacent to a friendly character that can use this trait. If you do, your opponent scores that character and generates a bystander on this card of their choice adjacent to any of their characters. Your opponent then scores 10 points for every bystander they generated this game via this trait regardless of source. So, generally, you only want to be running one Krakoan Revival guy on your team, since it's only going to matter for the highest point guy. If you are running a Krakoan Revival guy, you want to make sure that all of your guys on the rest of your team are lower point value than them, so that they can actually be picked up by the Krakoan Revival, as well as they are placed on their starting click in this game. You can still revive the same character multiple times, it's just so that if they have a lower point value, you're not placing them on their top top click, you're placing them on their lower point top click, if that makes sense. The thing to really be worried about is that your opponent immediately scores the character that they killed, and then they score an additional 10 points for every time you've used the trait. So if they kill a 30 point guy, they get 30 points. And then if you revive them, they get 10 points. So they have 40 points now. If they kill that 30 point guy again, and you wanna revive them again, they get another 30 points and they get 20 points now. So now they've got 90 points. If you keep reviving that guy, they're gonna get a lot of points. Now, normally this doesn't matter as long as you don't go to time. If you wipe their entire team, it doesn't matter how many points they have, you win the game. But if your opponent gets a hundred more points than the total build total of the game, they immediately win the game. So if you're playing a 300 point team, your opponent scores 400 points, they immediately win the game, the game ends. It's very important information to be aware of when you're running Cocoon Revival, because realistically, you can only revive about three or four guys before they just win the game on the points. Also, the bystanders that are generated from inside this book are very relevant for your opponent. Your opponent gets a bunch of very annoying figures. If you are running Cocoon Revival, you must have a game plan to deal with these figures. 
Starting off with Orca Soldiers is a good ranged attacker. It's got running shot, energy shield, deflections, penetrating psychic blast, and enhancement. The Coven Akaba is an annoying uh, probability control piece that is also autonomous. Half of the figures in here are autonomous with the stealth, precision strike if they really want to make an attack, barrier, and probability control. Very annoying to deal with. The Horde Culture is a healer. It's got four range with three targets and an incapacitate, some sidestep, some defend at 15, technically, and support, which is annoying. The Phobos armor is the tanky outwitter of the group. It's got two targets, six range, some force blast, energy shield deflections, and impervious, which is annoying to deal with if you do not have a way to exploit weakness. Then the one that I have the most trouble with personally, the Skinless Assassin. It has flurry, blades, combat reflexes, and shape change, and is autonomous. So if you kill an opponent's piece and they are in a way that they could place this figure adjacent to one of their figures as well as adjacent to one of yours, be aware they are likely to take the Skinless Assassin and kill that figure that they are next to, making your revive potentially worthless or forcing you to revive again. The Skinless Assassin is very dangerous. Keep an eye out for this one. It does not add to their action total because it is autonomous, and if they can place it adjacent to somebody already, they can just probably murder them, honestly. And it's very hard to hit back with the combat reflexes and shape change. Then we've got the PhD Apes, another melee quake figure with toughness and perplex. Just another nice little utility piece that your opponents might want to pick up. The Skinless Assassin, the Phobos Armor, and the Coven Akaba are, in my opinion, the most powerful ones on this card. They are all three the autonomous versions. That is telling you something for sure. Those are definitely some of the more annoying ones your opponents can pick up. And their abilities are stacked together in ways that are very annoying for you to deal with. Luckily, Exodus here can deal with some of them on his own. Now, remember what I said with the mind control. It just deals damage to them. So, assuming you're able to ignore the shape change, out with the shape change, whatever, you just kill the skillless assassin, right? You grab the skillless assassin, move it three squares, and then make a blaze claws fangs attack, and then it just dies. It takes four damage. Same thing with the PhD ape, so it's only got a 17. You don't have to deal with any other defensive shenanigans as long as you can shoot it, and it might even be able to quake in on your opponent's team. The horticulture is not really an attacker. Basically, anything can deal with it, honestly. Um, the Orcus Soldier gives Exodus specifically a little bit of trouble because it's got the energy shield deflections, but any melee guy can get in there. Seventeen's not very high for these guys. The Phobos Armor gives a lot of teams a lot of trouble, but Exodus can just, as long as you can hit that 18, you just kill it. You can shoot an energy explosion back at your opponent with two targets, and then the four damage beats out the double reducer, and since it is not an attack, your opponent does not get to roll to reduce the damage to zero. They only take the minus two to it. It is not an attack, remember. So this will always kill Phobos Armor. Same thing with Coven Akaba. Maybe you can grab a probability control with the precision strike and get some cheeky attack in before you kill it off. Keep in mind that if you are mind controlling against the Coven Akaba, they will be using their probability control on this. Use this either advantageously to make them waste it or um, be aware of it if they have nothing else left to use the probs on. Because if this hits, the Coven Akaba dies and they lose the probability control. So they will be forced to use it on this attack or lose it permanently. That is a deep dive on Exodus himself. One notable figure that I like to pair with this Exodus is this Prime Moira McTaggart. She has a very powerful ability on her top click here to pair with this Exodus. It is the Pawn of the Shadow King. When an adjacent friendly character uses mind control, they can use it with three targets. This is crazy for Exodus. Three target mind control is already pretty good just on its own, but also when Exodus mind controls three different people, he will deal his four damage or three damage or whatever is his printed value to everyone that he hits after resolutions. So you can mind control three different characters, make them all attack each other, or make them attack the rest of your opponent's team, and then deal four damage to all of them. This is not an attack. Do not worry about Mystic's feedback. Do not worry about rollouts. They just take the damage. This is very powerful, especially since this Moira McTaggart also has perplex her whole dial. You can see her clicks here. She doesn't have a whole lot of health, but she is 40 points, so we do not mind reviving her with Exodus, as she is also an X-Men. And her perplex brings Exodus's attack on his top dial up to a 12, so you will probably be hitting those mind controls. It is a lot to deal with with a running shot. Uh, if you throw a telekinesis in there from somebody else onto Exodus, then he running shots up, carrying Moira. She's adjacent to him, and he can just go mind controlling the entire opponent's team, killing them all after they've already hurt themselves. So that is the deep dive on Exodus, one of my favorite X-Men figures coming out in the past few sets. And it's a little deep dive on the Krakoan Revival trait, as well as some things that you should be aware of while using these kinds of figures. I personally like Exodus more than almost any other Krakoan Revival character, as he solves a lot of the problems with Krakoan Revival on his own, and when paired with some other friendly allies, can make those problems completely disappear and can turn the tide heavily in your favor. Happy playing!